In this video, I'm gonna show you how I take pictures of my cakes. Hi, it's Carolyn. If you wanna learn how to bake and decorate amazing cakes, then I would love for you to join me by hitting subscribe and the bell. I've had quite a, quite a few people ask me to show you um, my setup for how I take pictures, and it's not very exciting. <laughs> Um, I, it, I will show you what I do, but I just do it right out there on outside on the deck. I like to do outside lighting. I just feel like you get a little bit better of a picture than inside because I don't have all the proper lighting equipment yet. Um, but yeah, let's just get into the video. I'll show you how I take my pictures. All right, this corner over here is where I take my pictures. This is an old rusty stand. Um, and I just put something on top of it and I use the brick as a background. This is my uh, platform that I use. My Someone I know actually just used to work for, at a flooring company and they gave me this piece of uh, wood flooring and I like to use that. So I stick that on top of here. I have two cake stands that I usually use black one and a white one. Um, this black one has like a little lip on it and I don't love it. However, it's okay for 10 inch cakes or 12 inch. And this is a 12 inch white one. Don't ask me where, where these are from. <laughs> these are so old, probably like home goods or something like that. So I don't even know where to link these below, but there are plenty of different places where you can get nice cake stands from. I prefer ones that aren't too tall. That way the cake isn't gonna be so wobbly. And I just stick with black and white because it goes with everything. So when I'm ready to take a picture, I have this cake here, totes adorbs. <laughs> and I'm gonna put it on the cake stand. The sun rises over here is east. So a lot of times like the sun starts to shine on here and I have to make sure that there's not a lot of sun coming in. Um, so sometimes I'll either put the awning out or just wait for the sun to go over the house before I start to take my pictures. And I film with my phone and I take pictures with my phone. So since I'm using my phone to film, I can't show you um, with a phone, but I can just use my hands. So what I usually do is line it up and then I have to stand back a little bit. And I can screenshot the um, settings that I use on my phone and uh, the camera settings and I'll, I'll split screen that so you can see. I'll just stand here with the phone and take a lot of different pictures. So I like to go on angles. I'll go up, I'll go straight ahead. I'll do diagonal pictures, um, lots of different ways. Um, and then I'll just try to figure out which one looks best. I like to use the grid setting in my camera. That way you can see if it's perfectly lined up. And yeah, this is basically how I take pictures of all of my cakes, just using the brick as the background. So it kind of sucks when it's raining. Um, if I know that there's rain in the forecast when I have to take pictures, I try to get cakes done a little earlier or um, just figure out when I can take pictures. I don't like taking the pictures inside. I just like the natural light that you get from taking them outside. All right, just a quick tutorial on how I Photoshop my images to make them look a little bit better. I emailed this to myself. So I took the picture after I turned off the video and I'm just going to right click save image and I'm going to go into my cake uploads and just save the image here so I can open it in Photoshop. You must have Photoshop on your computer to be able to do this. Um, this is installed on my computer. I know that you can buy it for like $20 a month subscription. I'm not too sure. Listen, I am not a Photoshop pro, so I'm only gonna show you what I do. I'm sure there's more that I could do with this. I just, I don't know too much about it. So I already have my logo uploaded and I want to upload that picture. All right, so now looking at this picture, it looks a little red. And the reason it does is because I had the awning out to block the sun and it just created a weird color. So I'm gonna fix that. I'm not sure what version of Photoshop this is. What I wanna do right now is blur the background. So I have to go over here to the quick selection tool and then I'm going to left click and hold it down and I just want to select the entire cake and the cake stand. So this is what they call the marching ants. And I just want to do a quick outline. And you have to make sure that there's no, like the marching ants are right here. You have to make sure, so I'm holding the left side of the mouse down and I'm just dragging it over the entire cake. 
until all the marching ants are off of the cake and it is basically bordering the cake. Right here on the on the cake stand, it's in a little too much, so I'm holding the left button down and just dragging it to push these little marching ants out a little more. Now, I wanna bring this side in and this side in, so what I wanna do is hold down the Alt key and then hold the left side of the mouse and drag it in to where it wants to go. So holding down the Alt key makes it a negative. So now I basically have the outline and this is perfect. So now I wanna to go to select and then down to inverse. So now it's basically selecting the entire background instead of the cake. And then I'm gonna hit Control plus J on the keyboard and you can see over here, it has created a layer where there's just the background and not the cake. I wanna blur the background. So I make sure over here to blur the background, I make sure I'm on layer one. And then go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. I don't know how to use any of the other blurring tools, so this is just the easiest for me. I usually keep it between 2.4 and 2.8. If you turn it up really high, then it's gonna be really super blurry. If it's, if it's low, then you can barely tell. So just find something in the middle, hit okay. And now I wanna brighten this and contrast it a little bit and get rid of that red look to it. So I'm gonna click on the background layer, go up here to the brightness and contrast. I wanna turn the brightness up a little so I don't do too much because look, it makes it too bright, it washes it out. So I usually just go like three or four you know, it's very subtle. And then I go down to contrast. I'm holding the left clicker down on the mouse and then dragging it up. It'll contrast it a little bit. You see, you don't want it too contrasted, right? So I just drag it up to like three or four, you know, just to get a little bit of a contrast. I hit the back button here. And now I'm gonna go to vibrance and saturation. And I wanna saturate the colors a little bit. Again, if you bring it up too much, that looks ridiculous. So I like to do it like three or four. And for the vibrance, I do like three or four. And it's not always three or four. I just kind of look at, look at the picture and see what looks best. Now I'm gonna hit the back arrow. Actually, I can go to layer one. I'm gonna click on the layer one. Now this is gonna work on the background. So again, I'm gonna click brightness and contrast. I'm gonna bring the brightness down just a tad to like minus two or minus three. And then the contrast is gonna go up to about five. Hit the back button right here. And now I wanna get rid of this red background. So I'm gonna go here to the color balance. And if I, so this is the bar that I want to use. I'm gonna get rid of the red. So I have to left click on this little arrow and drag it to the left. And you see how it gets rid of that red look, right? If it's all the way to the right, it's too red. So you can mess around with these colors and sliders um, that way it, it looks better. I really don't use the magenta and green. Um, I guess maybe I could add a little green since this is a little red, but again, you know, that's, what's good about this. You could just mess around with the sliders. This one, I don't think I need at all. Maybe a little to the right to get rid of the yellow. All right. And that looks so much better. I, I still wish I didn't take it with the awning, but, um, it is what it is. That's fine. <laughs> and then one more thing I started to do is click this up here, which is uh, exposure. And I go down to gamma correction and then I just drag this over to the right a little bit to like 95, 96. And it just makes it look a little bit better. And that's all I do. So then I'm gonna go to file, save as. And then I'm gonna go down here to save it as a JPEG. Saving it in my, it's April 2022. So I'm gonna save it in that folder and I'm gonna name it. So when I name, the the cakes i'm going to name it i always put the name on it and then the theme so i'm going to name this buses kobe right um or cars i'm going to say buses kobe so when somebody says if they say i saw a cake that i like i always say what's the name on it so i can search it because i always save the name in the cake so let's save it as buses kobe Good, so now I save it with and without a watermark. 
So now I want to go to my watermark and I set this up a long time ago so it has a transparent background. I don't even remember how I did that. I found a video on YouTube. I don't even know where it is. <laughs> so you would have to try to find how to make a, a background transparent on Photoshop. Try to find a video if you need to do that. So I can select this whole thing. So I just press Control A and that selects the whole thing and then Control C c to copy it and then i go back here and to paste it i'm going to press on the keyboard Control v and that puts it down and then to move it i have to transform it so i'm going to hit Control plus t and now i can drag this up to where i want it to be so now i want to make it a little smaller in order that for the image not to distort, I have to hold down the shift key before I move it. So I'm pressing the shift key down. Now I have my mouse right here. I'm pressing the left side of the mouse and I'm dragging it in. If I didn't press the shift key, this could get really thin. It, it could just distort the image. So you have to have shift down. And I want to make it a little transparent. So I'm going to go over here to op opacity, opacity. <laughs> I'm saying it wrong, whatever. And I'm going to make it 70% and hit enter. And there it is with my watermark. Go to file, save as, and same thing, go to the April 22, make it a JPEG, and then buses Kobe. And then I wanna hit dash and then WM for watermark. And hit save. That is how I take my pictures and Photoshop them just to make the colors a little brighter and save them. I will do a split screen so you can see the before and after and see how this just looks a little brighter, a little better. It stands out a little more. So there you go. Pretty simple, not very exciting, <laughs> but that's how I take pictures of my cakes. So I have an iPhone 12 Pro Max. I invested in a really good phone that had a good camera and good video so I could take pictures of my cakes and record YouTube videos and everything. And again, I, I think I said I, was, I would split screen my settings on my camera on my phone so you could see that. And yeah, so I have that piece of wood, uh, that wood flooring sample. I would say that there are so many different um, backgrounds and things that you can get. You could even buy something and paint it. You could buy a piece of wood or something and paint it whatever color you would want it to be just to get a nice um, a bottom piece. And I just like the brick background. Sometimes I use a different background. I have like a piece of gray foam core board. Um, I'll put that behind my cakes or I also have like a lighter piece of wood which is a similar like a floor sample. I have that and I'll put that behind there. But there are a few companies that sell the backgrounds and I could try to find them or one of them and link them below so you can look into getting different backgrounds for your cakes. And again, I have Photoshop on my computer. If you don't have Photoshop, I know it can get a little pricey. I, I know there's other photo editing software out there. I'm just not too sure how to use them or what they are just because I've been using this for so long and I'm very basic with it. I'm sorry, I can't really go into deep detail because I don't understand Photoshop that well. I only use it for my pictures, for my cakes and my thumbnails on my YouTube channel. So um, that's the extent of what I do. Uh, hopefully it helped you out. And just remember that good lighting is everything. So that's why I like to take the pictures outside. You get the nice bright natural light and um, you can mess around with different backgrounds and different textures and there goes the neighbor's dog. <laughs> So anyway, I hope that helped you guys out. If you have any other questions or comments, leave them below. And you can follow me on social media and I have my website. Everything is listed in the description below as well. And my oven is about to ding. <laughs> so let me do this real quick. If you want to stick around, you can watch these two videos next and hit subscribe and the bell if you haven't already. Please like this video if you liked it. Thank you so much for watching. And remember, it's cake. Have fun. I will see you on the next one. Bye. Got to get the cake out of the oven. <laughs>